Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Sheikh, as you know, this season we've looked at other marajah as well and their opinions on, on, on certain you know, um, topics and, and subjects. In regards to Muharram, which we're going through right now, a lot of people would say that you shouldn't open, you shouldn't go to work on Ashura, on the 9th, on the 10th of Muharram, you shouldn't go to work, you shouldn't open your shop for business. According to Ayatollah Sistani, uh, Hafadullah, what is the, his opinion on whether, you know, we should have shops open or not on, on such days? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Wassalamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Adam Allah, ujurana wa ujurakum. With regard to opening shops and usual daily business um, on the day of Ashura, specifically, uh, Ayatollah Sistani would mention that if this act uh, became um, some kind of a sign of negligence and, and neglecting the um, what happened on Ahl al-Bayt salam with this sad day uh, in other words you just you know come back to work as usual as every day without you know respecting this day's this event this sad event in this case the one should leave uh, this act and avoid working on these two days uh, specifically on the 10th of Muharram and 9th of Muharram as well. Um, however, Ayatollah Shirazi Hafadahullah would state that it is mustahab um, for the individual to make himself busy in these two days with the Aza, with attending the Majalis, um, reviving the matter of Ahl al-Bayt by attending these uh, programs, and it is makruh and disliked for the one to work on the day of Ashura. Working is makruh, is, is disliked uh, to be worked. And he mentions, Samahatuhu, that عن الإمام أرضى عليه السلام قال من ترك السعي في حوائجه يوم عاشوراء قضى الله له حوائج الدنيا والآخر. The one who um, leaves his daily routine in terms of uh, you know, shopping, buying, let's say visiting friends, uh, you, know, you know, sitting down, in general whatever is in your needs, work, shopping and so forth, Allah would reward him by fulfilling the hawa'aj of dunya and akhirah for this individual. So it is recommended that the one should not uh, go to work or even if school, college or university to take a day off prior to the Ashura, at least one or two weeks, inform the management that, you know, I, I can't attend due to this reason, write a letter to the school, college, and so forth. So we try to commemorate this event and this occasion at, uh, in the best form uh, in order to um, commemorate and stand with the Aza of Ahl al-Bayt and to try to propagate and spread this musibah amongst other people as well. So when I take a day off, for example, the next day I go to work, he would ask, why did you take a day off, for example? And he would explain the situation, that we had Aza, um, we had a great Imam who sacrificed for the humanity for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day, and gradually they might be guided to Islam through Imam al Hussein. Shaykh, now let's move on to... Um you know, the conversation and, and, and the laws pertaining to looking. Now, does a Muslim lady, Muslim sister, does she have to cover her body in front of a boy who's not baligh? So this boy hasn't reached the age of puberty. Does she have to 
do full hijab in front of that person, that child, according to Sayyid Sistani? Ayatollah Sistani would mention in his mas'ala that um, for a woman, um, as an obligatory precaution, ahwat luzuman, to cover her hair and body from um, a young boy who can distinguish between the good and the bad, the good and the evil, the one who can understand these things. Let's say in the age of six, seven, eight, it depends on, the, on, on that uh, individual. Uh, but he would put a condition that if that boy reaches the stage in which if he looks at that woman, um, the arousal of the shahwa of the lust would be applied in this case. If that arousal of the shahwa happens, then it becomes haram as the obligatory portion. Um, Ayatollah Shirazi would mention that as obligatory precaution, ahwat wujuban, that she should cover herself, of course, the hair and the body, uh, from a non boy. If he can distinguish between the right and the wrong, the good and the bad, without the arousal of the lust. So that's the difference between him and Ayatollah Sistani. So this means that it could be even in the age of six or five even, if that boy can actually distinguish between the, the right and the wrong. And we have, mashallah, some clever boys who understand everything um, in such young age. So in this case, the woman should cover herself, the body, let's say, sh long sleeves, for example, to, to wear instead of short sleeves, to cover the hair, for example, and from this young child. Just now, is it okay to look at um, you know the the private parts. What if we're in like you know if it's in water, if we're in, in a swimming pool, or we're in um, you know in, in in the ocean, in the sea? Is is it okay then, or is it fully not permissible at all times? It is prohibited and not allowed to look at um, each one's private part. You know, let's say male to male, and of course. Male to female, that is worse, of course, um, um, to look at each other's uh, private parts. However, the exception is with regard to um, the husband and wife, that they can f entirely and fully look at each other's uh, body. And if the mother, let's say, changing a six month old baby nappies and so forth, which can she look? And there's no issue. I mean, she can even wash the baby with herself in, in the bathroom because the baby in this age, he cannot recognize or understand his uh, um, environment in this age. Other than these two exceptions, it seems to be that uh, uh, it is not allowed for the one to look at the others. I mean, in terms of the doctors, that's another issue, exception, that the doctor, oh. is a, he's a, fam a male doctor, let's say, um, and there are some kind of treatments for genitals, let's say, issues, diseases, billah, that they have to look, for example. These are exceptions. Otherwise, um, for the one to look, no, you're in a swimming pool, changing room, for example, you're not allowed to look at each other's private parts. So if you put private parts on one side, what about normal body parts? You know, the arms, legs, feet, things like that. Is that acceptable? The men can look at men's uh, body except the private parts, but it should be without lust, without temptation, without any shahwa and uh, arousal of, of the lust. But for the men to look at the woman, no. Uh, they're not allowed to look at the body of the, or the hair of the woman at all. I don't know of course. And even the woman cannot look at the body of the man as well. So she has to also lower her gaze, as the Quran says, to lower her gaze and to, mm -hmm. to lower the male gaze as well from the looking at the woman. Sheikhna, what about if we turn the tables around and we've got a, a grown man and let's say, you know, he's got a daughter or a niece and she hasn't started her menses cycle. Is he allowed to look at, at her? Does she have to cover in front of him 
um, you know, and, and, and in terms of, you know, body parts and stuff, hands, arms, legs and things like that. Does he, is he okay to look at that or should he not? And should she be, uh, you know, observing the hijab? If that girl who has reached the age of puberty or the taklif or bulugh, if she is a relative, let's say she's his daughter, um, let's say sister, whatever, there's some kind of blood relation with this individual, then he can look. She's halal mahram. But of course, uh, again, na'udhu billah, they shouldn't look with the, with the intention of lust, na'udhu billah, that's not allowed. Um, but other than that, if uh, the girl is non-mahram, let's say the neighbor's girl, for example, um, somebody else's friend's uh, girl, for example, who has reached the, the age of bulugh, then her hukum is like the hukum of her mother, mother and other sisters who are balig, who are adults. Because the shara'i hukum becomes wajib on this girl who has reached this age of taklif, as if it's wajib on her mother and any other female adults. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikhna. Thank you to all our viewers for joining us. If you have a question you'd like to send in, you can send it on Hakam SOS at imamhussain3.tv, and inshallah the Sheikh will be able to address that. Inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode of Hakam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, ah, ah.